In this video, we'll do an example involving linear interpolation. Interpolation is kind of like curve fitting. In interpolation, we construct a curve through the data points. In doing so, we make the implicit assumption that the data points are accurate and distinct. Curve fitting is applied to data that contains noise, usually due to measurement errors. The objective of curve fitting is to find the smooth curve that approximates the data in some sense. Thus, the curve does not have to hit the data points, but the curve fit and the data agree well overall. Interpolation is useful if you need to find a value between known data points. This happens a lot in engineering, especially with property tables like the one you encounter in your thermodynamics class. This table holds a list of various properties of superheated water vapor at a given pressure over a range of temperatures. A common thermal problem requires you to use these tables to obtain the properties at whatever temperature you need. However, each property is only given in 40 degree increments. If we need to find U, the specific internal energy, at say 250 Celsius, we'd be out of luck because 250C isn't explicitly listed in this table. This is where linear interpolation comes in. We can apply linear interpolation to obtain the property values at temperatures which aren't given in the table. This is actually really common. You'll likely be interpolating a lot when you take thermo and heat transfer. MATLAB's interp1 function does a great job at interpolating for us, so let's use it to find some unknown property values. As always, let's start with the plot. I already ran the code that loads and plots the mat file containing our data, which you can find in the link in the video description. If we pull up the plot, we can clearly see the gaps between temperatures. Interpolation is basically the process of playing connect the dots. Let's interpolate at a single temperature. Suppose we want to find the specific internal energy at t equals 300 c. From the plot, 300 c falls squarely between two known data points, so we need to use interp1. I call this variable TQ1, which stands for the first queried temperature. Interp1 accepts three arguments, the x data, the y data, and the query points, or the points at which you want to interpolate. In this case, the x data corresponds to the temperature, the y data corresponds to the specific internal energy, and TQ1 is the temperature where we want to interpolate, or 300 Celsius. The result is UQ1, or the queried specific internal energy. Numerically, interp1 returns about 2800 kilojoules per kilogram. Graphically, the interpolated point lies between the points in front of it and behind it. We just did a case where the queried point is, well, a single point. Interp1 can also handle a vector of query points. Now we want to interpolate at all the temperatures given in the 5 element TQ2 vector. Unsurprisingly, the UQ2 vector also contains 5 elements. These 5 elements represent the interpolated specific internal energies. They appear as the blue hexagons on the plot. By coincidence, the query temperature at 280 Celsius is actually a known data point. As expected, the interpolated internal energy is exactly the known internal energy. Throughout the entire video, we've been conducting linear interpolation. However, the interp1 function includes an optional fourth input, which allows us to specify an alternative interpolation method as a character vector. For example, you can choose to perform piecewise cubic interpolation or spline interpolation. You might learn about these if you take a more advanced numerical methods class, but for the purposes of this class and for most of your future engineering classes, linear interpolation is just fine. Feel free to play around with the other interpolation types in the script if you want. This concludes the steam table interpolation example. To summarize, we used the interp1 function in MATLAB to perform linear interpolation on a dataset stemming from a steam table commonly used in thermodynamics. We saw how interp1 can handle both a single query point and a vector of query points. See you next time.